So I got sent this interesting looking resin 3D printer, and in this video we're going to check it out and see what it all does, and if it's any good. So let's get started. So this package showed up at my doorstep about 8 o'clock at night one day, and as you can see it's not very small, and I had to take it out of its crate just to move it inside of the house. And on top of that, this thing is actually pretty heavy. But after getting it out of its crate and up onto a table, you can see that it has a metal frame all the way around it, and it's actually bolted to this. So I'm going to have to disassemble this metal frame and take it off of it. And with how much aluminum extrusion this came with, you can almost build your own FDM 3D printer just from the packaging. So one odd thing I found out right away about this printer is you can't open it without having power going into it. Even if you pull up on it or push the button, nothing happens. There's no release. And it did come with this really large power supply compared to the other printers that I have. And it looks like it runs off of a 24 volt system. And you'll see why in a little bit. And to plug in the power, it's just on the back, but they also put the power button on the back, which I really wish would be on the side or the front of the machine. But anyways, now that it has power, I can push the button and listen to the satisfying noise of it opening. And I do have to go into the software to raise the z-axis to get the box out of here that has all the rest of the stuff for this printer. And remember how I said this thing is pretty heavy? Well, I found out why. The main case of this is all steel. So as you can see with my magnets, it sticks to almost everything besides the aluminum vat and basically all the silver pieces are aluminum, but everything else is steel. And I guess this is as good a time as any to explain what this printer even is. So this was sent to me by a company called CY Fantasy or Sci Fantasy, I don't know exactly how they pronounce their name. And this is a concept or prototype model, so the whole thing is hand built. And the whole reason they sent it out to me was to get some feedback on it and see what I thought of it, along with make a video about it so I can show people that it exists. They're also planning on running a Kickstarter campaign to get the funding to actually bring these to market. And if you're not aware what Kickstarter is, it is a crowdfunding website. This allows people or companies to make a campaign to collect money to be able to start up their company or make a particular product. A lot of people think of this as a pre-order. Well, it's not really because the product doesn't exist yet and this is more of a donation and if the company succeeds in making their product, they will ship it to you. And normally, the appeal to this is you'll get a discount, like an early bird discount for helping back the product and making it a reality. But not all Kickstarter campaigns are going to be successful, even if they're completely funded. People don't realize how much stuff costs when you scale up to mass production. And there are lots of companies that have had successful Kickstarters that ran out of money before they even finished their product and no one got anything. So I'm just giving you this warning so you know the risk going into this if you're unaware. But anyways, back to this printer and its printing specs. And they're pretty standard for this volume printer. It has an 8.9 inch 4K monochrome screen, but because it is a larger screen, its pixel density is less, so it'll be very similar to having a 2K screen on a smaller printer, if that makes any sense. It does have a build area of 192 by 120 by 200 millimeters. It doesn't have Wi-Fi or anything like that, so you, the only way to get files onto it is transferring them over by a USB drive. And the entire machine weighs about 30 kilograms, or 66 pounds, which is a lot. But it does have some added things that I haven't seen on other printers before, like a resin pump. And this will basically keep your vat filled. So as the resin level drops, it will sense this and start pumping more resin in. There's also a second pump that will suck the resin out of the vat into a storage container on the underside of the printer. And both of these things sound good on paper, but actually using them, they're extremely slow. And they just add more complexity to the printer, which leads to more things that can break later on. One other feature that I think is more of a limitation is the resin cartridges that this uses. They just kind of plug into the back of the machine, and then you're able to pump the resin out into your vat, and then pump it out of the vat into the storage container. But there is no way to put the resin back into these containers. They are completely sealed. The one upside is you can use any resin you like on this, just pour it directly into your vat and pour it out. But that's going to render your entire pump system completely useless. And not to mention the pump system would be very hard to clean and you're going to be cross-contaminating resins all the time. One kind of annoying thing with the build plate is it has a flat top. So when you print, the resin will get stuck on top of it and you have to scrape it off 
which is fine, but it also means you're just keeping usable resin on top of it. All this needs is a small slant and everything will just roll off on its own. All in all though, this printer does print well, even using this random resin that it came with that I know no specifications about. Granted, I had to print extremely slow to make it work. And I did have one failed part on this, just due to me not supporting it. But after printing this, I wanted to see if I can print something a little bit faster using a different resin. So I cleaned up the vat and refilled it using some resin from Frozen, and I was able to print this out using just one second layers, and it looks a lot better. So they're obviously not locking you out of using other resins, which is nice, but at the same time, you can't utilize a lot of their features unless you don't mind stuff mixing and having nowhere to put it. And if you did need a bottle to store your resin in, because you're switching to different ones, you could just go buy a bottle to put it in, or even use a old bottle that you've cleaned out from other resin. But this still does defeat the purpose of the reservoir pump being able to keep up and keep everything filled, because you have to have a cartridge in there with resin in order for it to work. I guess one way that you can still use it all is to modify the cartridge and just open it up so you can put resin back into it, or they can sell openable cartridges so you will be able to fill them with whatever resin you want, but that's going to be up to them. And speaking of stuff that's going to be up to them, their early bird special is going to be under $800 for this printer, which in my opinion is kind of high for this printer. Yes, it has all these extra things, but I'm worried about all of those extra things breaking over time. And one of the main reasons that this type of printer works for so long and so well is they only have one moving part, and adding in all these other features adds more breaking points. And to be honest, you can already get printers that have this same build volume and same screens for about five to six hundred dollars. And on top of that, this printer is huge. It takes up a really large footprint and it's extremely heavy compared to all these other ones that you can easily pick up and move around. So it's hard to recommend this. And I'm not trying to talk bad about this company in any way, and I understand that this is a really hard market to get into. And making your design in a way that'll stand out and adding extra features should get people to get more attention on your product, but I am just afraid that all these extra things are more gimmick than going to be helpful in the long run, and there's too many things to break on this. But if you are interested in checking out their Kickstarter, I'll make sure to link it in the description when it's available, and I'll have a link to their website so you can look at everything and make your own decisions. And that's about it for this video. If you found it helpful, leave a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.